uh, yeah, so um, I believe that, uh, dear Usha Sanka, are you there? Can you turn on the mic? Yes, Hario, Namaste to everyone. Yeah. Namaste. Can I ask you, before I start actually introducing myself, to clear out the space and read out the Varnamala once, please, for me and for the audience? Oh, okay. Uh, sure. Give me a moment. Okay. So this is the way we teach Sanskritam. So we are we are so boring that we need sometimes to introduce some elements of um, music and calligraphy. So this is why I believe that my students are better than myself because they can not only understand some Vyankarana but can actually draw and sing better than me. I'm, I'm proud of them. Uh, they are overgrown me. So as Rosanna said, I've been dealing with these issues since 2005 when mm -hmm. I started this Sanskrit zealots movement. Uh, and I've been, I've published around 20 books, uh, publishing and republishing, including in India, some um, uh, Panchakarma books related. Uh, so, and being an editor for other books in Russia as well where Sanskrit is involved. So whenever Sanskrit comes in our life, uh, something usually goes wrong. Means something <laughs> gets, some trouble starts happening. So the phones go down, the encoding is a mess, uh, the electricity goes down. So lots of things happen and you need to always keep an eye on it. So for the last like 17 years, my eye is keen, making sure that in Russia, Sanskrit is okay. Okay, it's not maybe as good as we would want it to be, but at least some spoken Sanskrit classes, let's say every year we have, we have Sanskrit chanting, we have, um, we have uh, grammar, all kinds of grammar, we have Ramayana classes, uh, we have Vishnu Sahasranama classes, uh, we have uh, Panini classes, so we all kinds of uh, activities around Sanskrit. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, I learned uh, Usha Sanka, Dr. Usha Sanka, in 2014, when I uh, finalized my PhD, which was on Sanskrit dhatus. So in Pune, Pune is not just a place for me. Pune is the place where um, where the source of my inspiration is uh, came from, because uh, in 2007, in 2006, when I started my PhD, it was Palsule from Pune who was my uh, inspiration and, admir and, and, and source of uh, admiration because his uh, concordance of Sanskrit Dhatupadhas was what made me like what I am today. So my love for linguistics turned to Sanskrit Dhatus. So for eight years, uh, we had some close relationship with the Dhatus and I tried to uh, compare the Sanskrit Dhatupadhas with the European dictionaries. That means that I've been dealing with Sanskrit lexicography since 2006. Uh, there is nobody in Russia who knows more about Sanskrit dictionaries, I believe in that, uh, because I'm doing it on a daily basis like, like for, the, for, for so many years now. And there are actually a few points. So what I wanted to start is the name uh, of my paper is the Sanskrit lexicography, history and future. So what I want to say is that although I'm involved in publishing books, including dictionaries, that's some part of history. So those dictionaries that are already made, they are mostly mid 19th century level dictionaries. 
because the best dictionaries were the Sanskrit German ones, and there are almost no new dictionaries in the 20th century. So most of what has been done has been done like 170 years ago. So that means it was done at a very high level, actually, because I will show you now that we, we cannot even nowadays replicate what they've been doing in like mid 19th century. So the point is that to move to the future of Sanskrit lexicography, um, we need to understand why we are stuck where we are now. And the key is in the past. So that's why I'm trying to explore uh, the bi biographies of lexicographers, the history behind the books, and to try to re-understand them by uh, adding additional markup to them in the in the computer. So making the I I'm still reprinting the books. I'm still continuing the tradition. I believe that you cannot uh, teach or learn Sanskritum without the books. I mean, the Indian approach, the total, the, the full and only Indian approach doesn't work for us. We, we are different. Like the Indians are for the ear and we are for the eye. And that means we need some guide, some points to rely on. And that's why we still need the paper books, but I believe we need to combine them, to combine the paper books with the digital dictionaries. So since 2007, I've been dealing, and I will show you now what we are, what we are on in the in the field of Sanskrit digital lexicography. So I cannot show you the printed books. There are quite many of them, and still they are not of of utmost interest for you. But the digital part might be. So right now, I'm going to share my screen, and I hope you will be able to see it. I hope it will be seen. Uh, do you see what I see? Yes. A list of Sanskrit lexicography sources? Yes. Okay, so um, so the first point is that we've started as a part of um, Cologne Digital Sanskrit Dictionary Project. So at a point, like uh, in 2007, I understood that uh, something I mean, those people who have started this project like uh, in 1994, some of them have uh, gone out of business and that uh, new juice is wanted. And we need to actually not only to work inside Russia for Russia, but we need to become a part of some bigger ECOS uh, system, which is which is not exactly maybe Indian or American, like being making available those dictionaries not all i mean in some like let's say 24 25 like in two years from now i believe that i will be able to add to this website the sanskrit russian dictionaries as well but as of now even those dictionaries that are here they need a lot of attention so for example monia williams dictionary was added so many years ago and still even the headwords just the pure list of headwords is not yet empty. I mean, it's not. It contains um, uh, typos, errors, which means um, if we want to learn Google one day to translate Sanskritam, we um, need to feed to it an empty, a, a clear, clean list of headwords. And right now. As I speak, there exists no clean list of headwords in Sanskrit dictionaries. So we've united these 30, uh, 38 dictionaries as of now in one huge list, and it contains 375,000 words. So all these dictionaries combined contain uh, 375,000 words, which makes like 20 upasargas, 850 dhatus, and uh, 305 pratyayas. They uh, make a list of 375,000 words in the, let's say, in the dictionaries that we mostly use. 
I was in Pune in 2019, I believe. I went to the Deccan College uh, and I went to the Bhori. Uh, and I saw how far they are with the uh, digitization of their uh, dictionary project. So this an encyclopedic dictionary of Sanskrit on historical principles, which started in 1976, um, will most probably never be finished because uh because uh like now we are in two 2023 <clears throat> we are not even mid mid uh, akshara so means that per year their plan is to print 200 pages of a dictionary like on yearly basis every year 200 pages so when I calculated it last time, if they will continue with the same speed, it will require 3,800 years to finish just this one dictionary. Just this one dictionary. So they have all the paper slips. They have a huge building dedicated to this project. And I must say, I believe I will not see even the end of the Akshara up. Ah, what to say of the whole dictionary. And when I went to Bori, I saw their Prakrit dictionary and they are much better in doing dictionaries. They soon will reach the Akshara Ka. So uh, the Vyanjanas they'll soon reach. Uh, so, um, I mean, sometimes when you start some project, you must at least maybe wrongly, but understand how many centuries it will require to finish it. And in, in the case of dictionaries, um, I mean, the tradition of making, a, 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 let's say, a, a, a dictionary of European kind of is not very, uh, let's say, uh, close to the heart of our Indian colleagues because, uh, I mean, only a person who loves uh, literature as much as, much as Indians do can write a dictionary in shlokas. And, and Amaru Kosha is the single most ever commented source of Sanskrit literature in India. So if we compile the catalogus, catalogarum, you see that there is uh, this source, uh, this source in the special ed dictionaries, Catalogus Catalogorum, in, it was like printed in 19th century, and now there is the new Catalogus Catalogorum, which is mostly finished. So I have the data, which lies in this Catalogus Catalogorum. So based on that, I can say that the single most quoted source in Indian literature is the Amarokosha. In shlokas, which is not the most frequent way European students are used to uh, extract data from, which is not. Maybe it's wrong, and still I can hardly believe how could my students learn 10,000 words from the Amaru Kosha, at least to understand what a putra is. So that makes so the entry level is very high. I mean, when people are like, they are not 10 years old and then they are not five years old. When they come, they are already like 40, 50, 60, 70. I have like a student who is 75. So I cannot start with the Amara Kosha. I maybe would love to do it, but I cannot. So in this case, we need to go a different way. So, I mean, um, the Indian way of approaching dictionaries is different. And it's so huge that even the Indians cannot actually finish it. So it's so big. It becomes too big because even the biggest dictionaries in the world, uh, it took like, as I'm aware, the biggest dictionary, uh, the, there was a big dictionary, the Chicago Sh Sh Sumerian Dictionary. It took 100 years in Chicago. There was that Swedish Academy Dictionary. It took 100, 140 years. So in the history of mankind, there has never been a case when a dictionary was made for 4,000 years in a row. And I believe that this will not be the first case, but because but by the day 
when the last uh, volume will be finished, the first 500 will fade away. Fade away. So, and in this case, what I believe in is that we should unite approach, which I call a German approach. We should uh, apply, we should unite the um, wideness of the soul of the Russians and the wideness of the soul of our Indian colleagues, but have a German in a team that actually makes sure that the goals are realistic and that we can actually finish what we've started. So in this list there, for example, is Goldstucker Sanskrit English Dictionary, which means his, his surname is quite, quite German. And still he finished on the Akshara A in 1856. So it's not always Indians who, who finish at the Akshara A, but there is a tendency. There is a tendency which I really dislike. And I believe that we should unite our efforts because when I came to Pune, I said, okay, I'm here for you. I am ready to work without no reward. Just let me help you because I know how, how these things work. I've been working in a, um, I've been a director of a huge uh, company. I mean, I know how things actually work. I mean, if you have trouble, it's not an issue. I can solve most of them. So, and what I understood at that day in Pune was what I call the Kupa Manduka. The Kupa Manduka means that, that inside that well, they believe that the whole world is inside that well and the, the, the world, there is no other world, world around than just that well. That how can I actually help if I do not exist? I'm ready to help. I know how to help. I am the best in field of Sanskrit lexicography. But if you are a frog in a well, how can you accept help? You cannot. That's the point. Uh, and um, I really believe that I will live to, up to that day that when we will be able to combine the breath and the scrutiny needed to finish a dictionary and not only to start it. Uh, and I will give you one example of a dictionary, which actually uh, is, uh, I mean, to show uh, how dictionaries can be started and finished. Can be started and finished. So here in this list, which I show you right now, this is what we are working, where I am working in since 2007. I will show you one thing, okay. I will show you first one thing from here. So there is the algorithm which I invented, which is called simple search. So when you don't know nothing, when you don't know nothing, uh, you have to search for something. Uh, um, when you don't know nothing, you have to search for something. And in that case, and in that case, uh, comes this solution. Okay, so we enter the dictionary, for example, Apte. For example, we take Apte's Practical Sanskrit English Dictionary. And if we would want to search for, I don't know, uh, Krishna and don't know how it's spelled, and we would use Harvard Kyoto as the input, um, I would suppose that Krishna is written like, I don't know how it's written, like maybe this way. Okay, we can try it this way. Um, and I would not get no output. So I have to know what I look for to find something in the case of strict systems. Um, in the case of strict systems. Um, so what I've done is add a new solution which makes sure that even if I know don't know nothing, uh, I can still find most of the words uh, I actually uh, mean. So the system, uh, so the artificial system behind this algorithm 
can actually suppose what I've meant. Uh, and I can not only enter it in um, Latin uh, input, let's say, in, in English letters, I can input it in Kyrillic letters as well, actually. Uh, and it still will work. Uh, and in words like uh, Varanasi, it can get tough. You can forget which Dirkha is where, and you can still find a way out. Sometimes you can, sometimes it takes a bit more time. Okay, so here uh, the results are sorted based on frequency. So most frequent from the left to the right. Frequent doesn't mean that it always... Uh, frequent doesn't mean uh, uh, always that um, that's what you search for. But in most cases, frequent is what you actually need. Um, and maybe there is some word. Uh, Rosanna, can we ask for some word we would, might want to test from, from the Delhi colleagues? I would want to show from some input, some word I should search for. OK. Oh, oh. So just a moment. Udaka. Udaka, OK. U Let it be Udaka. Udaka. Yes. Okay. So in Udaka, we don't have no trouble because we don't have no uh, no other words mess up. Let's have it shorter. Let's have some shorter words where the you can take the word with uh, sir, sha, etc. Sir, what sha, kind of, what kind of words, Usha? Sha, sha, kind of variants. Sir, you put me. Sha. You put me one word, not one letter, one word. Shama. 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 Okay. Forgive us. Like this? Yes. Okay. So here you see that the no, some no, results, no, that no, some no. results are uh, over generated. That means uh, that uh, you see that there, some of the results are most probably wrong. It means I have not meant them. And if I will enter some short uh, hatus that the issues might become even bigger. For example, I would sh I would choose some I don't know vrt, and see that it will have like brta, uh, which is most probably not the case. But uh, as the lexicographers, the 19th century Indian lexicographers come from um, Calcutta that the uh, the v and b issue might become an issue and the computer has already been aware of it more than that i have an algorithm uh, that can correct familyized words and get sanskrit out from them so that means i know in how many ways people can get wrong quite in many and this system supposes that I can actually solve those issues. This is one part. So, and the, the, the other part, so there is grammar, there are dictionaries, and there is the corpora. So this part is the uh, Sanskrit non-Russian dictionary part. This is only one part of what we are dealing with. I will still show you how we can get from here, from this dictionary part, to the corpora part. This is where it actually starts uh, making sense. This is uh, where it actually starts making sense. Uh, I will choose some word. Let's let's try, for example, dharma. Uh, if I would not know uh, that Aptes dictionary does not have the entry dharma. Aptes dictionary does not have the entry dharma. It has the dharma. It has it the dharma. And if you are a first year student, it this obstacle might become crucial because you don't know what you actually search for. Because in Monye Williams is dharma and in Apte is dharma. And you have to know all, and you, you cannot remember all those ways. Okay. Beatling has this dhatu in this way, and Renu has it in the other way. So people should not, people do not, uh, and they do not 
Okay, so what I've done, I know what people will do. And I have a list of all the possible solutions in all the possible fields. I will try to find a way from out from dharma uh, to or corpora, which is not doesn't seem to be the easiest way. Okay, I will show you the way Grassman's uh, Rig Vedic dictionary works um, because it, it will be quicker in this case. I will show you how we have connected the dictionaries and the corpora. So we have quotes. So all these places, all these numbers are quotes. Quotes means that they are clickable, linkable, and openable. Means I don't have to rely on the um, Sanskrit English or Sanskrit German or Sanskrit French translations. I can actually open the Sanskrit Russian translation and we can start walking on a new dictionary that is based not on a translation of a dictionary that is translation of another dictionary that is a compilation of another dictionary, but I can actually open the corpora and find what Tatyana Lizarenko has translated it and take it from that place and actually rely on our main sources. A dictionary is not a source. A dictionary is a secondary source, but the initial source for the dictionary should be a corpora. So right now, as I, as I speak, we don't have a Sanskrit Russian dictionary. We have dictionaries that are translations of dictionaries, but if you, I, I mean, who am I to tell you that it gets wrong in so many ways? Uh, and the, the only way to fix it is to have a corpora, a corpora where we look for each quote. So Bertling, in mid 19th century, is in St. Petersburg. He gathered 144,000 um, articles in his dictionary. 144,000 articles. And to support the meanings in that dictionary, which was mid 19th century, so he did it by hand, he has 77,000 quotes. 77,000 quotes to support each, most of the meaning uh, aspects. So just giving meanings doesn't make sense. You have to be, I mean, it's all about details. It's all about details. So what I want to say is that we are only at the starting point of digital dictionaries. We are like 200 ways uh, of away from it. It's, it's, we're making only the kindergarten steps, actually. But still, we have combined uh, the Rig Veda we started from. Then it was Adharva Veda. Then we combined Ramayana and Mahabharata. And Panini is connected. So lots of things inside this interface uh, is interconnected. So this is two things interconnected the dictionary and the corpora and where it will actually become more fun will be when grammar will be connected so grammar dictionaries and corpora but for that we will require to work together nobody in india and nobody in russia and nobody in germany and nobody in the us can do it on its own nobody there are no such forces in nature but if we unite, we can make an instrument that will that will make, make we will be able to use the computer not, a, not as a calculus, but as it can be actually used. So what I show is what I will show now is so it's not connected now to this system because these systems have become too big. But for example, here we have the Adharva Veda as it is. Um, and actually, it is better than the real book. We have corrected 249 mistakes in the original publication of the Russian Adharva Veda because we have checked each uh, diacritical mark. We have we, this electronic text is cleaner than the printed book, and it contains the Sanskrit text and the Russian translation. This is one of the aspects. So 
based on such parallel systems, we can train Google Translate. We can do many things. The problem is now that if you, it's called garbage in, garbage out. If you give some dirt, you will return dirt. So as of now, the internet is dirty. As of now, the internet is dirty. The Sanskrit part is dirty. It's very dirty. So that's why it's no, um, we should not um, find it strange that the Google Translate makes silly things, which he already could not make, actually. So it's strange. But, the, but one of the points is that um, the internet is dirty and we need to make some, um, some islands, some islands of clean sources verified and uh for that we need to unite the possibilities of artificial intelligence or, and volunteers we need around 10000 volunteers from india to clean the internet united with if we take only students 10000 students is not a lot so 10000 multiplied by the possibilities of artificial intelligence. In that case, in 200 years from now, we might clean some small part of the Sanskrit internet. As of now, it's 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 bad. It's really bad. So here, if I press, so the commentaries are here, right? Right beneath the text. So in the printed book, the commentaries are, are, are at the very end of the printed book. The commentaries are far away. So here everything is together. Uh, and if I press it, I actually, I'm able to quote it. So I will go now to the chat and press the, I will press the um, quote. And you actually see that it's form as a quote for an article. You don't have to look in the book, what page is it, is it on? It's ready for use in scientific publications. So that means, we can speed up our work around 100 times. The question is, uh, are we ready for all this speed? Uh, I'm not sure right now we are, but we sure should try to at least change some of the things. So what we've added lately, for example, to the Ramayana. Uh, yes, so actually the Sundara Kanda is there as well, but the link is not public yet. The link is not public yet. So, for example, we have that uh, Aranya Kakanda. So, um, it's it has it it's the it's the utmost the quality of the publications is I mean it's superb, but you cannot buy this book in Russia. So, to buy this book in Russia, the first volume of Ramayana, you need to have um, eleven thousand rupees. 11,000 rupees for a single volume of Ramayana, which is quite a lot in India and in Russia. In India and in Russia, we're not that rich. And people still want to read Ramayana. And it's not available. And I don't say that we should switch totally to the digital systems. We should combine them. We should be able to print the best books we have, and for some sources, for example, if I will press like Control Control F, I will be able to search on this page. For example, I would want to find the Dharma, and I can find actually those places which is mentioned, which is quicker than just reading once again the thousand pages in the book, right? Isn't it? And we have gone further than this. I mean, this was where we started, and we have the open. We have. All kinds of Bhagavad Gita translations, for example, the Semens of translation we've added lately. So it's here. Uh, so we have all kinds of Gita translations, uh, Smirnov's translations, Ermon's translations, all kinds of things are here. Um, yeah, so the printed books, the bilingual editions we've printed in the past years, for example, the Amarushataka, it's here. So when the book is printed, we are open to publish the texts, uh, I mean, everywhere. So the Amaru Shadaka is here. So, I mean, we can learn the Chandases of Sanskritam through um, Bhartrihari. We have Bhartrihari here. So, I mean, it's a huge amount of work done.
but we have not yet even started. We have not yet even started. So this is the public part. And now I will show you a few things that are not that uh, public. So on this site, on our site, I've compiled today a list of some of the sources that have not yet become part of the Cologne project. They, some of them will, some of them will, some will not. For example, for uh, there is this uh, dictionary which you are not even aware of. It contains only 8,000 words, which is actually enough for a student. So actually 8,200 words is enough for a student. So I've been dealing with statistics. And I must say that a student doesn't need a 90,000 word dictionary. He doesn't even need a 30,000 word dictionary. The, the, the size does not matter. The size of the dictionary does not matter at all. It can be 2,000 word dictionary and it can fulfill most of the needs. So the uh, the very center of the of each dictionary is same. I have calculated that the very center of each dictionary in the world is the same, and only the periphery uh, uh, changes. So uh, uh, in Sanskrit, um, seventy five percent of the words are samasas. Seventy five percent in German language. Half in German language, half in Sanskrit time, it's even more than in German. So, uh, because of this is Samasas, you can turn a list of 8,000 words in 800,000 words in a, in, a, in a glimpse of an eye. Uh, and that doesn't mean that the dictionary becomes good. So, this is, a, is, this is one of the dictionaries that is not yet added to the Cologne, but I hope it will be. I hope it will be. Uh, and one of the things that, uh, okay, so there is a full list of all the Sopa Sargadhatus in Samskritam. This is a full list of Sopa Sargadhatus as per Monye Williams uh, in Samskritam. So 10,500 Sopa Sargadhatus. With all the forms taken from Oliver's Helvig's uh, digital corpora. Uh, with all the corp, all the forms available from those dhatus. So it can become rather big with some bigger, um, uh, like upagam. So upagam is a separate entry in Monia Williams. So, uh, okay, this is a big story. I will not dive deeper, but which one of the things that can be actually used not only by us, but by English speaking, um, uh, Researchers are the uh, Meyerhofer dictionaries, the Keva and Eva. So this is what I'm especially proud uh, of. And when uh, Professor Manfred Meyerhofer was still alive, he gave me the permission to publish his dictionaries online. He wanted them to be available. Um, so we can actually quote, so, so we can actually quote and we can search for these entries. So I use Keva on a weekly basis. I'm deeply interested in etymology. And there is no other better source than Keva and Eva. And here it is. So these dictionaries have been digitized before me in Leiden, in Brill. Uh, in Brill, they've digitized, but they are closed. They are Cooper Manduka kind of. There are Kupa Manduka not only in India. There are many Kupa Mandukas around the world. So what I say is, until we will start to work together, we will not go far. We will always start from the beginning once again. We will not continue. I mean, we've, we've had great teachers. But what we've done, I mean, is it enough? Have we done everything we can to actually unite our efforts? Because this is only dictionaries. Dictionaries don't contain all the words you need, whatever. But but even the basis, even the basis, is not is not very very well done. So okay, so we have this list of Sanskrit Russian dictionaries, which is right before your eyes, and it contains the Keva, which is of use 
for the non-Russian speaking between us, there is this uh, digital uh, digital uh, uh, Kologne uh, um, site which has this simple search, which is the most probably the the most uh, important feature as of now. Uh, and it can okay. Let me try maybe some other word that will show how we actually interlink those things. Uh, maybe this Udaka will be here in Money Williams, a bigger ar article. No, not very big. So it says that it's in the Rig Veda, but it doesn't say where. So for that case, we use Grafman, which will say uh, where in what um, mandala is this Udakam there. So, okay. So this is one of the things we are involved. And I would really, really appreciate. I must say, we are weak. And only together we are strong. And the dictionary is something people actually use. And lots of issues are there. If we go to the Sanskritam, Sanskritam dictionaries, the Vajaspatiam, the Shabda Kalpadruma, very many issues are there. Very many. The printed text is dirty. The digital text is dirty. So that is dirt up to dirt. And and it's it's bad. It's really bad. I would say it's miserable, actually. So it's so bad, I can hardly understand how can people use it. And it is the best and the biggest Sanskrit dictionary in the world. And nobody actually cares to make it error-free. We can. If we unite five minutes per day, 10,000 people for 200 years, we can actually clean up most of it. We just need to work together for at least for one week uh, in, a, in a workshop, let's say in Pune, and, and, and gather people. I mean, I believe that the student is a big force, but the force should be used uh, with the, let's say, it should be, there, there should be a way to, like, to show what can actually be done. I mean, so many things can be done with these dictionaries. We are all, we are really weak. Uh, 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 as as now we are weak, but the strength is in our hands. If we unite, we can overcome these difficulties. I know the path. That can use for me. Вы хотите сказать, что я исчерпал трижды свой лимит? Нет. Is it enough? Everything is clear. Yeah, it is clear. And no, uh, no. <clears throat> Not. Uh, I am sorry. Just, uh, just uh, one question, if I may. Yes. Yes, please. <clears throat> Thank you ever so much for this passionate appeal uh, to the endological <clears throat> community. <clears throat> uh, the work you suggest will definitely be most beneficial for plenty of people. Uh, why do you say that uh, the, the digitized copy of the Meyerhofer dictionary is uh, also in the zone of Kupa Manduka? No, it's not. The Meyerhofer is out of the Kupa Manduka because I went to him and I made sure that he gave me uh, permission to use the dictionary. So no, Meyerhofer is out of that zone. So mm -hmm. when I said Kupa, no, when, ah, I, I meant the Leiden edition. So in Leiden, there is the Brill Foundation. In Leiden, there is the Brill Foundation. And mm. they have digitized uh, mm. not only Meyerhofer, many etymological dictionaries. Exactly, that, yes. Yes. So they have many, many, many dictionaries actually already digitized. But nobody from the outside world has access to them. So they yes. have huge databases which contain Meyerhofer as one of the parts. Mm. Yeah, but to Meyerhoff and turn the dictionary, they are available on the Internet Archive. They are available as a scan. I myself, 20 years ago, went to the library in Moscow and scanned. This book is the scan that is in the Internet. It's my scan because I just made it 20 years ago. But we can go further. We can make it, we can make it searchable. I mean, we can make an index of words. Uh, I mean, lots of things are there to be done. I mean, uh, can... this is what you mean. They yeah, I, I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, the Meyerhofer, as it's done in Leiden, is a Kupa Manduka. And we are opening, we are making once again the same work that they've, do, they've done already because theirs is closed. 
it's um, it's uh, it's closed code, and we are open, and that's the difference. So they are closed, we are open, and yeah. So the point is that if we remain closed, then I believe that Sanskrit has no future. If we we if we will do as we do now, I see a clear end coming soon. I believe only in open heartedness and sharing what we have and uniting. And I will show you one more thing. I have forgotten the most important thing, and and I will I want to show. I hope you have. I have not uh, made you feel tiresome yet. Uh, I want to show you or gem something that nobody outside of maybe 50 people in St. Petersburg are aware of. I hope now you see my uh, my small screen in the middle of my um, sh screen. And I will share, search for some terms. We can search in Kyrillic, in Russian. We can search in Sanskritam, in uh, it's in uh, transliteration, but we could make it Devanagari as well. Actually, it doesn't. It's no big deal. And I will show you how our internal Sanskrit search engine words works. So based on that corpora, which I showed you. So here is the corpora, which itself is huge. So we have developed our Sanskrit search engine. Um, why? Because we want to finish the Russian translation of Ramayana. And for that, we need instruments to quickly uh, get all kinds of reference, how this uh, word was translated like by or Mahabharata translators. Like we don't have to reinvent the wheel every week. We rely on the shoulders of the people who were be before us. And I mean, they were huge. We are. We are nobody compared to them, but we must make their um, translations more available. As, as I said, only for the first volume of the Ramayana, it cost 11,000 11, rupees, which is a lot, which is a lot. You can hardly find it and still it's a lot. So that's why lots of issues are here. Copyright issues, publication housing, lots. It's not easy. It doesn't, it, I don't say that there are no issues, but if we will just look at it and say that, okay, it's, it's tough, let someone else do it, then they'll, they'll, they'll be done. So here is the corpora. And based on that, we have the search engine. I will, op I, I'll open the results of the search. So here you see that in the hundred sources that we have added to our Sanskrit in engine, there are 6,000 places where Dharma is found. It's so many that my computer is freezing now. So you can actually see that the first part is dictionaries. You can see, for example, that, that uh, there are two great books on Indian mythology in Russia, and we can actually have digitized them. So it's not only those usual dictionaries you are like, uh, like this Opte and Monia Williams and uh, all kinds. There are smaller dictionaries, like here, uh, the, sec the third volume of Ramayana has some small glossary at the end, and still it's here. Why it's of value? It contains a so clear translation of this Naman, Dharma Bhrt. It says that it is the supporter of the Dharma. The Russian uh, translation of it's very beautiful. In dictionaries, they don't give translations of the names. They don't give the translations of the names, and here it's given. So as I said, the size of the dictionary does not matter. This is a small glossary, and yet it contains such a statements which might overcome the big, the bulky dictionaries. So it's not about the size. And see, so here we have uh, categorize them. So the first we have the, the secondary sources, and then we have the translations. And we we actually know ahead in which uh, kanda we will find the source. We have the Upanishads here. We have Vyasabhasha. We have commentaries separate. So if we want to find the word not in the text, but in the commentaries, everything's there. So actually we need or non-Google Sanskrit search engine 
that will be based on a corpora, that will be united with the grammar and dictionary. So as I said, we are only at the very beginning of a new era of getting uh, connected with Sanskrit. So you can see that sometimes it's not very convenient and not, it's not easy to find which exactly uh, um, sentence in the Russian translation uh, is the translation of the uh, originals, Mulam Shloka, and still it's quicker than reread the whole Mahabharata. So I don't say it's perfect. It's good. But it can become perfect if we don't remain alone. And this is where I do believe. I repeat this speech for the last 70 years. And for the next 70, I believe I will continue that together we can more than each one of us separately. So we have this quote. Okay, so now I see that this translator I will trust. If it's Vasilikov, I will trust. If it will be Kalyanov there, oh, I will think twice. So I can I can find a way if I, okay, so here is the search result. And soon we will add a possibility to go from this quote to the full text exactly where it is. So it is a connection of connection of connection. So we are we are trying to interconnect all of the Sanskrit term possible. Of course, it's ambitious, and most probably I will die not finishing it, but at least I will start it. And some of my students will one day continue it. I hope. We wish you a long life, uh, Marcus. So, very and long many, life. Yes. Many, many times. <laughs> Yes, Baker, thank you very much for such yeah. a brilliant and very, you know, energetic <laughs> <laughs> presentation. Yeah. So we are all here are impressed by your activity. And um, so I was I impressed in September, the September when I was now. In... Okay, so here we are. I hope I uh, don't speak too know. harsh about the Indian colleagues, but I must say I've tried many times since 2004 when I went to the Sampurna at Sanskrit University. I've tried to to tell that we don't have to we don't have to be as it was like thousand years ago. It, that, it, I mean, there yeah. are some good things that we should we should continue some of the things. I mean, absolutely adorable Sanskrit recitation. Absolutely, we should not go away from. It. No, never, never. But some things it might be time has come. We have to change. And that yes. means us changing, and that means Indian yes. sign changing as well. But the Arthur Institute, I have been there. I know what a pathetic condition. Uh, actually, uh, Maxim, uh, yes, yeah. Actually, I accept all your views, all your impressions, all your feelings, all your emotions, because I also had gone to the Deccan College Pune with. Uh, with, I was full of enthusiasm that let us finish this 300 year project into 30 years. So we should have a big, big, very big, as you said, a big team to help them. And there is now technology available. So you don't have to type everything if it is Rig Veda 525, something like this. So you don't have to type all the verses. You can connect it with the Rig Veda and it can automatically Code that number. It it already yes. can yes. outside, but but in the in the in the Deccan College they have cut off the internet. In the Deccan College yes. they have cut off no. the internet because yes. they are afraid that the dictionary will go into the yes. wild, yes. that people will start using yes. it. know all this because they have one crore 10 like cards and I was there to assist them but anyway leave it now my uh, my idea is and my feeling is and uh, what I think is that we should collaborate and I am ready I'm open for collaboration and sitting in Delhi, maybe we can involve more people. And there are so many Sanskrit students and scholars all over the world. As you said, they will be happy to be participants in this in this noble job. This is I hope. I hope in in February, 
in on, starting on 14th of February in Pondicherry, there will be the seventh symposium for Sanskrit computational mm -hmm. linguistic, which I will attend. And I hope one day mm -hmm. we will be to, able to meet in person and in Kathmandu in the Sanskrit uh, World Sanskrit Conference in December next year. I hope we can meet and actually start doing and not only mm -hmm. speak about doing, but actually mm -hmm. start doing. Yes, yes. And uh, we can have technical support. We ha I have some people who can give technical support. There are some organizations where we can connect them and start working. Number two, we have we are publishing a dictionary by Dr. Raghuvira. It is English Sanskrit dictionary. It was made before 1947, but right. it could never be printed because you know how challenging it is. I do so know. I do know. Yeah. So now it has already uh, seven volumes are already out. Right. Eight I am working on. Uh, eight should be, I think, available. Will will go to print in January, and hopefully, and ninth will be just very small, maybe two hundred pages only, half of the other volumes. So I think that we can finish this project by uh, March or April or maybe sometime now, very soon, maybe in six months or so, because not much work is left now. Right. So I have shown your colleagues the dictionary and uh, as soon as this is... Um, this is over. Uh, and as the, soon as it's over. As, yeah. And another point that I was already thinking is about, as you said, 800 words student dictionary, Sanskrit Russian. Yeah, so it doesn't that is very important. Because usually people think, oh, this is big dictionary, this is good dictionary. No. No. Yes, I agree that maybe 8,000 words you can target on that and whatever support I can give, I am always available. And now the data of Dr. Raghuvira's dictionary is with me. So I will, uh, I will I share. I am totally and... interested. I am totally interested. I am ready. Whatever help I can so, well, I mean, yeah. together we are strong. Uh, so I will send one volume with your colleagues and uh, at least you can see how the dictionary is and how we can work with the help of that dictionary. Because, for example, there is one word, mountain. So right. in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, 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 when I was doing the entry for mountain, I saw that Parvata, in Sanskrit for mountain, in Rig Veda was used for height, not for mountain. Right. So mm -hmm. that is why we actually need the, I mean, you can never remember it. Even, <laughs> even if you are a Rig Veda expert, you might forget it. Yes, of course. So uh, with this, with this dictionary in my hands now, we are open and we are ready to work with you for preparing an eight thousand sanskrit russian dictionary great i am pleased i am pleased to hear such warm words i am i must say that i for the many years i was badly thinking about india for many years because people <laughs> usually speak in india but i don't see yeah. them doing and this is I, I was feeling bad about this i must say please come maybe you will have some better feelings yes. and uh, thank you very much so Ch shashi used uh, to mention very right word noble noble activity noble, yeah. thank you martis for your noble activity and uh, we wish you so you know prosperity and uh, successful yeah. and of course and i hope uh, we meet and of course, in india uh, can actually uh, have Martis, I hope that uh, during the next several years, uh, we, together with our daily and Pune colleagues, will organize Sanskrit, Sanskritological conference in Moscow. You know, like in Vancouver or other. Yeah, so we have a plan you know, that Moscow will be the new capital of Sanskrit in the world. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but for that, we need your support. We have only one small minor yes. issue. Yes. Just your support. <laughs> okay. So far as whatever is in my hands, it's always... But we will start from uh, very modestly yes. with the yes. uh, International Sanskritological yes. Sanskritological Conference in Moscow. Okay? Right. Yes. So, you know, every five years or every four, I don't remember. Uh, four, yes? 